Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Love to see you all. Um, I'm just going to kill some time while we wait for people to join us. So help me out in the comments and tell me where you're dialing in from. Where are you? I've seen some people say good morning already. So I'm guessing you guys are in the States. Oh, land of the forest fire. Not so good. Um, hey, everybody. So welcome to SEO Toolbox 2. This is the when, why and how to start auditing your website. Um, if you've not seen the first iteration of this, it is online. Just Google SEO Toolbox and it should be up there. But yeah, welcome, welcome, everybody. So I can see some people from Canada, from Ohio, the US, Florida, amazing. Lots and lots of people from America today. Welcome, everybody. Oh, we've got one from Leeds in the UK. Fantastic. Good evening to you. Um, so let's kick off. So as I said, this is SEO Toolbox 2. So we're going to talk about auditing your website today. My name is Paige Hobart. I'm the SEO team director at a company called We Are Roast. I'm completely obsessed with SERP features. And if you're tuning into Brighton SEO at the end of the week, I'll be there on Friday. So I look forward to seeing some of you there. Craig, would you like to introduce yourself? So I'm Craig Campbell from Scotland. Um, do a lot of digital error. Uh, do, do a lot of SEO consultancy, affiliate marketing, and they uh, help train agencies these days. Um, and yeah, just generally mess around. You'll probably see me kicking about on YouTube and stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, pleasure to be here. Uh, over to me. Tristan, do you want to go next? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Tristan Jarman. I'm the co-founder of Purple Smudge Digital Marketing Agency down here in beautiful Brighton. Nice little segue link back to Brighton SEO, which is going to be happening towards the end of this week. Uh, yeah, so I've been in the game for 10 plus years. And uh, yeah, if you, uh, you'll see some contact details, but if anything interests you through this presentation and you have any questions, just drop me an email. As I say, those details will come up shortly or hit me up on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to have a further conversation on any questions I'm not able to answer today. Awesome, thank you, Tristan. Um, do you want to share some slides with us? Why not? Get this going. Let's get this Very party started. Love a tech audit. It's like organizing a website, which is just totally up my street. <laughs> so hopefully you can see my screen now. Perfect. So if we're all ready to kick off, I will get this underway. Uh, so as Paige kindly introduced this, this is SEO Toolbox 2. So, um, and today we'll be looking at why, when, and how to start auditing your website. And so the premise of me putting together kind of this SEO Toolbox series was really, um, and it all happened sadly around the time that um, COVID has hit the world. Um, and I've seen some changes with businesses, uh, people going on furlough, um, which is, uh, a scheme we have in the UK for people who have been hit by um, COVID and are unable to keep working. So I won't go into too much of that, but if it doesn't make any sense, it might be a UK thing. I'm not researched it worldwide. But back to my point, um, why I wanted to put this series together is because I'm realizing that budgets have got tighter. People might find themselves taking on more marketing than they did before, or you might be a business owner that you've now found yourself on the front line of your own website, e-commerce store, something like that, and thinking, I've not really delved into the marketing because I've had somebody else looking at that. Um, so I wanted to build a series where you can learn more about how to get actionable data out of your website. This one, we're looking at why, when, and how to start auditing your website. Um, because, <clears throat> excuse me, I still speak with a number of people uh, and clients and potential clients, and I'm sure Paige and Craig, you'll be able to confirm this. Still, there's a number of people that don't really know about auditing your website, why to audit your website, uh, or how to even go about auditing your website. So that is a very long intro into <laughs> me getting this underway. So as I say, who am I? Uh, I'm Tristan Jarman, co-founder of Purpose Much. Here are my details. Uh, I'll drop them into the chat box at the end. Uh, please do get in contact with me if you've got any questions. The whole, as I say, the whole premise of this is like I really want to try and help people 
just get more out of your website, get more out of your marketing. A lot of people are doing amazing jobs with certain elements of their marketing, but things like a site audit might be the missing piece to get your content a bit of a boost that um, it, it needed due to a number of factors, which we will jump into. So why are we here today? So I wanted to put this presentation together and maybe a series of presentations and webinars to discuss audits. And today we'll sort of be talking about audits, but more specifically looking at technical audits and sort of demystifying um, everything around that. Um, excuse all the sort of slides that I've put in here. I wanted to inject a element of humor into this today. Um, so why are we here today? The, the why really, and as Morpheus says, let me tell you why you're here. Um, so do you actually know what issues your website has? Do you know what's holding your SEO efforts back and possibly alienating visitors? Do you know that you could be losing money, leads and much more from not doing an audit? And uh, by the way, it's 2020 and you're still not auditing. So uh, there must be a good reason for this, but if you're watching this and thinking, I've never run an audit, what is a website audit? You're in safe hands and on your way to being an SEO pro and understanding the purpose of website audits a little bit more. So come on the journey with me, grab yourself a drink and let's get stuck in. So what we're gonna be covering today, we're gonna to be looking at what is an audit, different types of audits, why audit your website, when to audit your website, what if I don't audit my website, how to start auditing your website, and a quick SEO audit checklist I've put together that you guys can take away and start using afterwards. Um, and I'm gonna build upon this as time goes on, but I really wanted a takeaway for people that if they get to the end of this and go, oh, that was, that was great, what do I do now? You've got a little something at the end of this to take away. So what is an audit? Well, that's quite an open title. And if you speak to different SEOs, digital marketers, agencies, et cetera, they'll most likely come to you with a different answer. Um, as I say, today we'll be looking more on the side of uh, technical SEO audits. And a technical SEO audit is the process of checking the health of a site and its technical SEO aspects, trying to find then fix issues that might be holding your website back from being crawled indexed and ranked um, and really yeah it, it's an analysis of all factors related to site search and visibility a forward it can give you a greater and deeper understanding of what's holding your site back uh, not generating traffic sales and conversions that you thought um, where improvements can be made uh, and where would you like to go with your site so it can build out quite a nice roadmap but you might be thinking that I haven't heard, so you might be thinking, why have I have I not heard more about SEO audits? We all hear about the cool PR and link building campaigns uh, that people are doing uh, at agencies, et cetera. And my feeling is, and it'd be interesting to hear what you guys think, um, I think, brah, site audits are not seen as cool and they're not seen as sexy. But if you're like Kevin, you don't want your audits to be left behind because essentially it's like setting your house on fire and driving away and not knowing that you've even done that. So let's have a look at the different types of audits that you can go through. So a website audit could be an audit of multiple elements of your website and marketing channels. For example, you'll be seeing people talk about SEO audits or more specifically technical SEO audits, content audits, UX audits, and backlink audits. So a website could be an, um, da, 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 sorry, I, don't, I think you see where we're going. If there's an area of marketing uh, for your website, then it can be audited. So you may also come across an audit that would encompass all of these areas. So just be aware of that. Uh, so really, why audit your website? Tell me why. Um, just a quick question I just wanted to throw out to you guys, uh, Paige and Craig. Uh, why would you guys, uh, being agency related or in agencies, why would you audit a website? Well, what a, what a start. You, I mean, if you don't audit your website, you're going in completely blind. You don't know what you should be fixing first. I love a really, really in-depth audit to tell me exactly what all my issues are and then I can prioritize them and what's gonna have the greatest impact first. How about you, Craig? 
I mean, I'm the same. It's one of the first things I'll ever do. Um, you know, if I'm, you know, even if I'm only doing something like link building for a website, you know, I'm not going to guess or hope that the content or, you know, the the internal linking's okay or, or, you know, that there's not going to be any 404s. So I think it's just common sense. The first thing you're going to do, like when you go to drive your cars, put petrol in, you know, and say, uh, and you know, I don't know why people don't do it. The first thing you should be doing is saying, "What the hell am I? You know, what the hell is my business based on here?" And you know, it's you've got to equate it to other things in life so that it sinks into people. But that is the equivalent. Why you know, why do people not look at this first hand and say, "Right, this is a piece of garbage. That's broken. That's broken. That's broken." Before you even spend money on content, or you know, money or you know, time or whatever it's going to be on content links and anything else, you need to get the basics done first. And for me, a lot of people are not doing that. And every time now, I used to do the live site audit show with Ross Tavendale, and I'm not kidding. The the sites that we seen, and the sites that I still see to this day, are absolutely horrendous. And these people are calling themselves SEOs, <laughs> and you're just like, geez. Um, what 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 do you do with your time? So yeah, it's 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 real bad practice. But the first thing I would do. Perfect. Uh, and so just to continue that on, like why audit your website? It's all those things that Craig and Paige have just commented on. But it's also search engines. Cha- search engines change. Search engines are getting smarter. SEO changes. People change. And that's your internal structure of people change, but people's habits and et cetera change and technology changes. So, you know, why do a website audit? It's a great question. For a website, an audit can be, you know, for any website, an audit can be an essential part of your business. Why, if you're looking to do any major changes to your site, such as a refresh, a migration, uh, seen those go wrong plenty of times, not by me. Um, A platform change, you know, it can be, a line in the sand or a benchmark as an example when something goes away down the road uh, i've seen this happen with many site migrations that i just said but if you've done uh, an audit before and after you've at least got a paper trail of finding out what's you know what went away um i've got some other examples throughout this of of where things go wrong if you don't do it. Uh, But yeah, why do I need a website audit? You know, as I just said, search engines are changing and getting smarter. They're trying to reduce spam and serve you the best result. So, you know, these changes uh, in how search engines work, work out and deliver uh, what search results serve you. And, you know, many moons ago, it was a lot simpler just to add some keywords to a title, sprinkle the keywords in your content, go out and get some links, and hey, presto, you're on the first page of Google results. You know, those days are, are long behind us. Uh, and in the past um, in the past few years, we've seen some quite big strides with um, the evolution of sort of search and how Google specifically are kind of looking at sites. So, you know, we've had the big mobile update, you know, it's always quality updates, Panda updates, and even things like Google Ads, which is, you know, outside of organic search, but even Google Ads is sort of always changing. The fact it's called just Google Ads now, not Google AdWords. Um, But uh, each change that I've just briefly discussed could impact your site. So, you know, please note that Google updates and makes some small tweaks each day. And I've I've researched into this and I've seen anything from 500 to 1,000 plus changes a year. What what do you guys quickly feel, Paige and Craig, how much Google updates over the year, apart from those big core ones? Apart from the big core ones, I've seen some keywords be like so volatile on like a daily basis depending on what you're searching some sometimes it's really stable and nice and easy but google can be making changes to the serps constantly um so you have to be on top of all of these things and i guess abiding by best practice a lot of the time to make sure that you're as stable as possible too exactly yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, I see the same as what you guys are seeing. Even you know, Google balls and up and updates as well, and you know, having to then roll them back. Uh, sometimes you wake up, and you're just like, you know, especially that. You know, I think it was uh, you know six weeks ago or so, and I was in the group chat with a lot of SEO colleagues, and people were just panicking at eleven at night. They're like, 
oh my god, I've never seen anything like this before. Obviously, the next day it kind of had reverted back. But yeah, it's constant, and and why not? That you know, there's billions of pages and 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 you know websites being thrown up every day or every year or whatever, and uh, you know they have to clean up, <laughs> you know what's on there and filter out the crap. So you know what I would say. You know, obviously you're talking about loads of updates. What I would say to the you know in, in case you are inexperienced in listening, they're basically cleaning up the garbage. From the web, so you know, duplicate content, crappy links, anything that's garbage, you know, potentially is going to get slammed if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. And uh, you know, is that such a bad thing? Probably not. Obviously, when they're doing, you know, updates and it impacts you, and gives you a bit of a fright. It's not good for your blood pressure, but um, yeah, they're they're doing it more frequently, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a pain, but it is what it is, and we've got to embrace it. Exactly. And so, yeah, just carrying on from that, you know, Google also looks at, I think it's like over 200 points related to your site and search and all of those combined uh, into whether you're on the first page or in the deep, dark pages of five, six, seven and onwards, you know, the less likelihood that you're going to be found. So you can put plans in place to stay on top of this. Ideally, you want to see how your website is working how it's not working, and how your customers are seeing your website uh, throughout the year. Uh, and how is this affecting your search ranking? So if there's a, if a problem arises, then you'll be ready to jump on it and not let problems build and essentially crush your kind of rankings and search visibility. Um, you know, Google continues to get smarter all of the time, and most business owners probably aren't able to keep up with this um, pace. So, you know, as I said, there's hundreds of factors used by search engines to determine how your site will be returned in results. Uh, and some of those uh, factors include things like site speed, content quality, backlink quality, uh, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, and then what are the actual, you know, clear benefits of running a site audit? So. Uh, it's a great question. An audit will allow you to analyze and measure where your website is in terms of technical user experience and SEO standpoint, uh, what's holding it back, what you'll need to look to improve um, for its efficiency and benefit and, and visibility. Um, and really you're looking to, so with more like a technical SEO audit, you're really looking to improve how Google crawls, indexes, and then ranks your website in turn, uh, yeah, affecting your rankings. If executed and implemented correctly, you'll be increasing your site traffic and performance in no time. Uh, an audit can give a business uh, like exceptional opportunities for growth, uh, putting that into quite a clear roadmap, which is quite cool. Uh, and then sort of further benefits uh, from findings you might find are, you know, that you've got a technically unsound website. Uh, you're impeding or holding back your website's potential traffic in organic search. You, as I uh, mentioned earlier, you could be losing sales or conversions, uh, and you could also just be confusing visitors um, with how your site's set up. Uh, so really, when do we want to be auditing our websites? Uh, and excuse the uh, gif here, but when should you audit a website? Well. Like Audrina from the Hills, it depends. And that is a huge inside SEO joke that it depends. You seem to hear this time and time again, but it does depend. Like Audrina from the Hills, if we imagine she's talking about a website and not a boy, you know, she's saying, I don't know, it depends. I don't know anything about him. Uh, you know, with clients, I typically begin with a, a technical audit to identify the strengths and weaknesses together with opportunities the client has in organic search. Um, I think I was watching something, um, or we were chatting about this the other day, Craig, um, that, and I guess for you as well, Paige, that, you know, before really working with any new potential client or, you know, you said you're into affiliate marketing, Craig, before starting with a new site, you would, you guys would run some form of audit just to see the state of play um, before proceeding. So... I don't know if we want to dive too much more into that. We just jump to the next slide. So yeah, carrying on, when to audit your website. So when did you last run an audit? 
Has an audit ever been run for your website? Has there been a recent algorithm change in Google? Have you seen traffic changes? Are you looking for ways to improve your website? Uh, there's a number of reasons to run an audit, and the major ones that uh, I find working with clients is that a, an audit's just never been done, uh, never been performed, and in many cases, a business literally has no idea of the current state uh, of their website or its health. And just interesting, I won't see it now, but I'll see it once I come off the presentation. Just in the comments, uh, I would love to know whether a you, if you personally do your own marketing for your own website, or if you work for a company, you might not want to say as much, um, but do you know what your current website's health is? Do you know, yeah, what could be holding it back? Have you run an audit? Uh, hopefully you haven't, and that's why you're here to learn some more to get you on that path. But it'd be interested to know, yeah, have you run an audit? Haven't you run an audit? Do you know the site's health? You know, a lot of people will look at a website and think, oh, that looks pretty, and so that's my job done. Uh, and that's very concerning to me, but happens more often than not. And then I just love an analogy, so I just wanna give this analogy. So you imagine this scenario with a car. You have a car, you love it, you make sure it's valeted regularly. Uh, why? Because you love how your car looks, yet you only take it to your local mechanic when something seriously goes wrong. And that scenario doesn't sound like the best way to own a car. We all know that ideally you should be getting your car serviced and checking certain elements after X amount of miles because they need to be replenished or replaced. Uh, to ensure that your car runs smoothly all the time. Now imagine if we looked at a website and marketing in the same way, when was the last time you had someone look under the hood or the bonnet of your website? Granted, we're not all mechanically minded, but there's simple checks that we can all do, um, and then you can take that to someone who is more SEO minded or technically minded to run through a more thorough audit for you. Uh, and so ideally, when should you run an audit? My personal feeling at a basic is to run it once a year, if not twice a year. Um, just um, guys, what are your thoughts? How And in the comments as well, how often do you feel uh, an audit should be run realistically? Yeah, so definitely at least once a year, bare, bare minimum once a year. Um, as Craig and I probably do, you audit the site as you get served it. So as an agency, we will be pitching for business. So we'll do light touch audits. We will hopefully win that business and do very intense audits. And that's your roadmap for the year a lot of the time is fix all these things, grow your traffic. Um, so yeah, at least once a year. I think I would argue that you potentially have to do it a lot more frequently depending on if you use content writers and stuff like that. And, you know, for me, I use, uh, I outsource certain elements of work, including the grunt work. And I audit a website once a month because people do change URLs and don't think about it, rip down pictures, you know, and don't do the redirects and stuff like that. So I think, if it depends on your setup obviously if your processes are right and you're not taking pages down there's no need to do it once a month overkill but i think for for a lot of people watching potentially they're not going to be doing their own content and stuff like that and if you're giving them editorial access and they're messing about with urls and you know removing pages if there's a cleanup job going on then do it a lot more frequently i personally do it once a month because i've got borderline OCD or ADHD or something <laughs> like that. So yeah. yeah, but there you go. Absolutely, and there's a lot of tools that I think Tristan's going to go talk about now, which will help yeah. you monitor it more frequently. Definitely, and I, I think both your points are fantastic. I think it, you know, this is, you know, it comes down to I think it depends how often should you do it. You know, like what both Craig and Paige are saying. Yeah, you know, how often are you updating content? you know, how big's your site, how often are you making changes to the site, etc. And so over time, you'll start to gauge how often you should be running a site audit. Um, and just having a look at this slide here, this is um, SEM Rush's tool. And I will talk about some other tools as well. But with a tool like SEM Rush site audit tool, you can actually set up periodical crawls which will start to highlight and track issues, which is pretty awesome, uh, keeping you at the top of your website's health and driving your website 
ideally above your competitors, could you keep me on top of it? Uh, there are other site audit software available, which I will discuss in uh, another slide or so. But this uh, SEM Rush site audit tool is pretty easy to set up. You can set it to do it once or, you know, uh, on a weekly, monthly uh, basis type thing. Um, and once you go in, it actually gives you highlighted next to a lot of the errors, what the error is, and then sort of an advisable uh, solution to that. But, you know, if you're starting out, I think it's a great piece of software to get started with. But there are many more, um, as I'll discuss shortly, um, for different size websites and different knowledge brackets. But if you're just starting, I would, um, not just because this is an SEM Rush webinar, but I would recommend trialing uh, SEM Rush's site audit tool because it's pretty easy to get to grips with. Um, but if we have a look at why, what happens if I don't audit my website? Uh, and hopefully you've been watching this so far and it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you've just joined us, uh, here's some highlights uh, from audits I and my team have run. Um, I've chosen to share some of the issues uh, you find and uncover um, with ease and mostly for free. Um, but in short, uh, problems do build up over time. Time passes, more issues build up, staff members come and go, developers can come and go, the site changes and builds more over time. Now, if you put that over a year or a five year basis and you've never audited your site, you can see there's a possibility that a huge number of issues have built up. Uh, and you know, with no one checking under the bonnet or hood of your website, depending on the size of your website, you could be sitting on a potential gold mine of kind of issues and fixes that are gonna help catapult your website. Um, Let's jump to the next slide. So here are a few examples of, um, so we've spoken about using SEM Rush's site audit tool, but here's a few examples of things you can actually do outside of a site audit tool. Um, I'm just gonna quickly see if I can share a different screen. I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Oh, technical yeah. risk. <laughs> stop screen. I think um so if I just quickly stop sharing, I'm gonna quickly share a different screen. Ooh. It will be worth it, people. I'm excited now, the build up. So I love doing this using uh, site search operators in Google. Um, and this is one of the first few things I do when I come to someone's site. I've used ASOS as an example. So by using this, it pulls up every page it's indexed, well, every page ish that's indexed in Google for ASOS. Um, what you can find and what I sometimes find um, from doing this with particular sites is straight away you can start to see staging sites being indexed. Um, you can start to see image attachments. Um, so I don't know whether anyone watching this is aware of uh, some old WordPress issues. Uh, you can find images are being indexed as uh, attachments. So it's like a whole page that's getting indexed and all it is is just one image. And it's a simple fix, but I found uh, on a website recently, I think it was something like 10,000 pages they had indexed and something like two to four thousand with these image attachment pages and this person had no idea this existed in SERPs so by running a site search like this in Google it can start to uncover um, some potential uh, gold mines of um, information and I just want to quickly jump to one other screen What's cool, almost, and I've got almost seamless. yeah, almost seamless. Uh, what I've got to do here is shout out to Dawn Anderson, who I saw present this one time, and I think it's documented on a couple of websites. But you can actually do the um, uh, site and put in staging or test, like this example here. And so you can see, I'll quickly scroll through, not to call any company out, but you can start to see a lot of these companies have their test and staging sites live, which, uh, what are your thoughts, guys? Is that a good or a bad thing? That's an absolute nightmare, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times I've had to tell devs to make sure their staging site is not indexable. Yeah. And so just by doing, oh, sorry, Craig. 
No, no, I was just going to say there's nothing else I can add to that. <laughs> Let me just say yeah, that's great again. So, yeah, there's a few simple things you can actually do without having access to paid for software. You can just start to search your own site and how it looks in SERPs and Google and start to see whether there's any junk, we'll call it junk, any junk in there that really shouldn't be. And you're like, hang on a minute, how are we going to go and resolve this situation? Because we can start to see, you know, as an example, you might have a small site that's, you know, 10 pages or 100 pages that you think are live, but actually due to a old WordPress issue, you might have 500 pages live, but you, you only actually have 100 that you want people to be seeing. But don't worry, Google will be spending that time crawling and indexing those other pages when it shouldn't be. So you're sort of wasting everybody's time uh, and hindering yourself. Uh, and then some examples of other issues. I know the three of us uh, discussed this uh, only yesterday, but robots TXT not being um, configured correctly. Um, Paige, I think you had an example, um, or, or well, I think we all have an example of when things get brought over from staging to going live, and to someone accidentally leaves in their robots TXT, um, you're blocking Google, and then all of a sudden, you know, if that's not picked up too fast, you basically told uh, Google in your robots TXT just to just ignore my site. I don't want it to be live <laughs> anymore, which is yeah. quite scary. Absolutely, yeah. No, the one we had was they'd left the no index tags on from the staging site to live, so we got asked why we couldn't. They couldn't find their own website when they were searching for their brand, um, and that was that was why the whole site had no index tags left on it, which have now been removed. So you know, good good to start somewhere. Uh, actually, I just uh, thought of an example where it was just a friend we were helping. Um, they had a yoga website. Uh, and that same example, she was going, I, I, I don't understand. I'm typing in my name of the website, the company, and it's just not coming up. I don't understand what's happening. Uh, and then there's a little function in the back of the website for indexing, no indexing for when you've got stuff on staging sites and whatnot. And all we did was click the button, and their website was back up in no time. Um, we explained it, but they thought we were doing some sort of like wizardry and witchcraft. And we were like, no, literally, it was just a very quick but quite detrimental thing that we, was detrimental, but we were able to resolve it. Um, and so just a few examples of other things um, of how issues build up. Uh, I'll leave this uh, as a last one and jump on to the next slide after. But things like redirect chain. So I've seen examples of like a whole bunch of legacy websites all being redirected to a new website. Uh, then changes happen on the new site, more redirects are built up and put in place. Uh, and then all of a sudden you can start to find there's this whole mess of uh, redirects that are being created, uh, which are just hindering your website no end. Um, or another example is um, redirects get put into place on a website, a change happens, another redirect is put into place, and so on and so forth until you're like, oh, we actually have five redirects now, or the redirect chain, I've seen this before, keeps going and effectively just breaks your browser. But again, if you're not running a site audit or looking through your site, doing any form of checks, you're not gonna be necessarily aware of this. And sometimes your users, customers, will not notify you of this. They will just simply go somewhere else and enjoy their experience with them because they have taken the time and care to ensure that these issues aren't happening uh, and also Google hates redirect chains um, doesn't like that at all so how do we start auditing your website so yeah the real question is where do I start so from my personal perspective I look at a number of areas using cr different crawlers different software running manual checks as I just showed a couple quickly um, and being a human being as well. So what I mean by that is I'll look at a website through a human's eyes, uh, trying to complete a task on a website, for example, if it's an e-commerce website, I might try and find a specific product and purchase it. Uh, you know, what did I find from doing that task? Were there any blockers in the process? Um, I'm sure you'll, you know, you will have been covered something if you follow these sort of little tasks and processes that you're like, actually, that wasn't as seamless as I thought it would be. So all of these things start to build into the bigger audit and making your website a better, more fun place for Google and 
ultimately the users that use the website. That's what you want to be hitting the mark for. Uh, and then, so how do we start auditing our website? So ideally, you prioritize what it is you want to do. And you know, to do everything would be nice, uh, but I and the team here suggest that you try and ascertain where you want to start. So, you know, do you want to be looking at a website performance assessment, uh, an SEO assessment, conversion rate optimization, or looking at the technical aspects of your website? Um, and then determine your sort of resource, budget, and time that you have to invest in this and try and marry that up with, you know, what you can, you know, logistically get out of it. So if you've, if you've got, you know, a pot of money and you're wanting to go in heavy and go, actually, I'm going to look at all aspects of my website. Great. But you might be sitting there going, no, I've got no money. I'm going to have to do this myself. So you might then want to start to break this down and go, actually, I might use, you know, a tool like SEM Rush or Screaming Frog and just crawl it, see what errors and issues come back and start to work through it like that. There's multiple different ways of doing this but ensure that you have accesses. So ensure that you have Google Analytics access um, and actual correct rights and access. Uh, make sure you've got Google Search Console set up and access to that. And make sure that um, if you run Google Ads, you personally have access to Google Ads um, and not a third party who might be running them for you. Uh, and then it comes down to choosing the right tool. So there's a whole bunch, and I'm sure we could do a whole webinar on talking about just tools in itself. But I've got three just to quickly discuss. You've got Screaming Frog, which is great for sort of sites, smaller sites. Um, it's a bit of a Swiss Army knife of um, site audit tools. Uh, in, if you've got a really small site, you can actually use it for free for up to 500 pages. And I think it's £149 after that. Um, for slightly larger, uh, for you able, so you are able to crawl more pages. Put my words in order. Then you've got uh, tools like Deep Crawl, which um, will allow you to crawl vast, vast, vast numbers of pages. So if you've got a huge site, you know, sort of twenty to a hundred thousand plus pages, uh, I'd use a tool like that. And then uh, there's the site bulb. There's a whole bunch I could go through and discuss with you, um, but the uh, the last one is SEM Rush, um, as we're all here for an SEM Rush webinar today. The the site audit tool is pretty easy to set up and get running. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd start off with something like SEM Rush personally. If you know a little bit more about what you're doing, then you know by all means jump into something like Screaming Frog and Deep Crawl, um, just to sort of you know start to build on that. Um, I just because I want to throw another question to you guys. Do you guys generally use one crawler or do you use more than one? Oh, um, I will generally start with Screaming Frog, as you already recommended. Um, I will use multiple tools, but in terms of crawlers, it will be either Screaming Frog or one of the enterprise level, depending on the size of the site. That I do love to have a proper dig into search um, analytics, uh, Google Analytics, uh, Search Console, all of that, because I want to make sure that what I'm auditing is performance driven. So what I'm fixing is going to be the thing that makes the biggest difference as well. How about awesome. you, Craig? I also like to use a couple of tools just for um, verification sake so some tools may miss out on certain things or whatever and uh, you know other tools do it but you know i always pretty much i'll do same russian screaming frog as a starter point but as Paige says it really depends on the the level or type of website you might have to use something um you know an enterprise level solution which they does cost money the only reason i like to compare same Russian Screaming Frog is I think they're both great tools. Um, but certainly when I'm doing it, I, I want to use it as a comparison, but I think in terms of reporting to, to a client where you're going to say, listen, your website's a mess. Same Rush comes out a hell of a lot cleaner. It could be exported. You can, you know, send them fixes or whatever. So, I, you know, I think same Rush is great in terms of being able to deliver that to clients saying, look, you know, your website's a mess. You know, we're going to have to to work on it for two months just to clean 
you know, stuff up. So that's the two that I use. And, I, you know, I have used Deep Crawl and <coughs> various other tools. But again, it also comes down to what you determine is auditing your website. You know, you've got GT metrics and, and Pingdom and stuff like that for speed. Um, you know, you know, are you auditing, uh, you know, the user stuff? You, you're going to use something like Hotjar or something else. You know, so what is an audit? You know, there's so many different tools out there that we have to use. Like Sam Rush doesn't have heat maps and neither does Screaming Frog. So there, there's a, a number of different tools depending on what you're analysing. And that's absolutely perfect, Craig, because I was going to move on to some of the other free-based tools, as you said, GT Metrics. Um, you know, you've got Lighthouse, uh, Hotjar. I think you can get up to three pages for free. Um, uh, so you can track and heat map up to three pages on your site for free. And then there's paid for versions after that. But using, um, you know, a lot of these tools and, and building up, your, your site audit toolbox, uh, we'll call it, uh, is a great way. And it doesn't all have to be paid for tools. There's so many out there. And I'm sort of jumping ahead of myself a little bit, but I'm going to be doing um, another webinar, which I'll discuss a bit more shortly. But that's going to be a live site audit. So you know some of those tools that Craig just mentioned uh, and the other ones we've been discussing, we're, we'll be having a look at those a little bit more in depth um, within the live site audit. And so just rounding this off, I'll pop this link into the um, chat box. It's a quick SEO audit checklist that I've created. It's by no means the ultimate one, and I think if you probably want an ultimate one, it's Andy Drinkwater, isn't it, Craig, who's got like the ultimate checklist knocking around yeah he's he's famous for that he's the yeah. linking guy so um yeah we'll have a look yeah so i'll drop this one in there uh, i'm going to be building this over time really it's just a resource to you know get people on the on the bandwagon for auditing your website and you know what should i be looking at and doing etc uh and then just to round this off as i said there's going to be an seo toolbox three on how to audit your website so it's a live site audit so if you are watching this uh live or pre-recorded please do um if you want your site to be audited live come and join us submit your site it's going to be myself Page again hosting fantastically and we'll be joined by uh, another scott ross tavendale um a close friend of yours craig i believe yeah very good friend of mine me and ross are good buddies going holiday together and uh yeah i've not seen yeah. him for a while in covid Best but we, we yeah we don't we, we were brought up not far from each other so um yeah keep in touch and Share a lot of tips with each other. So, yeah. Very nice. Know, Ross. I like so, to throw them under the bus, though. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. If you're looking to get your site audited live, drop it in. Uh, register for the next webinar. Uh, drop your site in there. Uh, I'd love to have a look at it. Um, and uh, if it gets picked successfully, we'll be auditing it live. Uh, and so just a little thank you from me. Um, I've had an absolute blast. I hope you gained some information out of this. Um, and now we will have a look at some of the questions that have been coming in and I will stop talking for a little bit. So <laughs> stop sharing my yeah, screen. Yeah, that was amazing. Thanks, Tristan. That was really, really helpful. Um, like Tristan said, please put your questions in the comments. We're going to go through a few now. Um, so my first question for both of you is, what is your favourite part of doing a tech audit? I think I said at the start, my, my favourite bit is prioritising everything at the end and giving something like a traffic light system. I love a bit of colour coding. But how about you guys? Um, I'll go first to hell with it. Um, I don't like doing a tech audit. Do we have to like that stuff? No. Um, it's a pain in the backside, really, but no, it has to be done. And I think uh, it kind of creates the the roadmap, if you like, of where you're going, some of the stuff that you've got to do. Um, and But it gets boring after a while. Once you've audited a lot of websites, you're just like, oh, it's the same crap again. So I don't find it that enjoyable or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not going to claim to do that, plus... Um, you know, I, I don't even do it anymore, to be honest. I just get someone in the office to do it. Um, so, 
I, I fair, don't know like God. Fair. I hate them. I hate them. So your favourite bit would be finding the issues like in five minutes and then going done. Picked done. Up. Get them off. But yeah, no, it is what it is. If you're taking over a project and going to be dealing with it, um, I think you know getting that stuff done so that you just get it out of your mind and, and not worry about it and make sure that you have the confidence in that website to then go on and do your whatever else you do. And I, th I think for me, and I don't know what this says about me as a person, um, I like to find problems uh, as well as solutions. But, yes, yeah, so, something weird about me where it's like I, 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 yeah, I just love finding a whole host of problems. And I think that's possibly because you can then feed back to someone and say there's some fantastic opportunities here. Um, yeah. As I yeah. say, I'm not sure what that says about my character. I think that's probably one of the few times that, as an SEO, you really prove your worth to a client as well. And you're like, hey, this is how bad your website is right now. Pay me lots of money to fix it, please. <laughs> I'm going to go back. It's the invoicing part of the audit that I really love. What's that, that showing them? From... Yeah. <laughs> Getting that money, brilliant. So I guess this leads me on to my next question. What's the best thing you've ever found in an audit? So I mentioned finding the entire website was no indexed earlier, but come on, Craig, you've got to have some really good examples. Um, so I, I, I said a story and, and Tristan mentioned it yesterday. Um, now, it wasn't me, this was someone else, but it's quite a funny story. And it was someone buying an affiliate website. So you're it's the reverse. So you're auditing a website to find a weakness so that you can jump on that great opportunity and, you know, get the website, get it running and, and flip it on for a massive profit. And the website, it was an e-commerce website and obviously all the products were added and all that stuff looked great. But the guy stupidly didn't have, when you add something to basket, he didn't have a view cart button. So it, the guy was like, what did I do? I'm pulling my hair out, you know, he's uh, going, it's not converting, it's crap, and he's tried this and he's tried that, and what happens is uh, someone seen that as an opportunity, offered them, you know, a pittance for this website, and literally added that button and sold it. You, you have no idea what kind of money, we're talking about life-changing money, and um, so that one thing was the biggest glaring error I've ever seen, um, in my life but as you say there's there's people there just doing some basic garbage that you know you really should be killed for i love that example particularly because it doesn't use a tool to find that problem you've not crawled yeah. it and seen that you've not you've not put it through semrush no offense semrush and found that you've just gone on the website and had a look and been like yeah. i can't convert that's it <laughs> That, I mean, this guy was paying for consultancy with all different SEOs who all talk to each other, and he's like, "Can you see? Can you see this? Can you see that?" And and everyone's like, "Oh, can't see it. <laughs> can't see anything because it was one of my mates that bought it." But yeah, um, <laughs> and I probably shouldn't admit that, but uh, hey ho, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah. But it, but it yeah. is, just sorry to jump in there, but it is things like that, isn't it? It's like I kind of wanted to express that you can use these different tools to sort of, you know, run a site audit, uh, you know, through one of these tools, get some feedback, but it is things like that where it's like, actually just go through the website as a human and understand, you know, have a laptop, desktop, whatever you've got, have a mobile phone and go through there and yeah, pick a product or, or set somebody a challenge. If you sell t-shirts, can you go and find a black t-shirt? You know, can you go and find it? Can you go and purchase it? As you said, Craig, <laughs> You know, there was a simple issue um, that yeah was alienating sales for this person. And yeah, as my example earlier, we all think our websites look pretty and shiny, um, but under the hood, there's just some fundamental errors that you are actively leaving money on the table. Um, yeah. Yeah, really good examples, guys. Really good. So we've got a question from uh, World Worldwide Logistics. After getting results, how do you prioritize what needs fixing first? For example, error codes, missing H1s, missing alt text. I think you have, the only way you can prioritize that is in your own experience, which is the most important to do. And I think, you know, get out there and, and you know, if you get a pay, you know, loads of 404 errors, for example, and also the, the same audit comes back saying, 
you've not tagged any of your images, which is the most important, which is going to give you the best result. Um, you know, obviously it's tagging the images, right? No, I'm only kidding. Um, so, um, so you've got to tackle things in terms of the importance that you believe as an SEO have to, you know, what's going to move the needle more. And clearly 404s are not good. You know, three, you know doing a, a redirect there onto the next most relevant page or whatever it's going to be is going to clean your website up. So, you know, do it in order of priority and importance. Um, and we all know what that is. Tagging images isn't really going to make a blind bit of difference. I, I still not tag my images, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's it's obviously. I think for me, it's those crawling er errors and 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 you know four oh fours and silly things like that 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 I'm going to prioritize. Um, yeah, but I just uh, yeah, I'd second everything that Craig said. I, I will simply only repeat what he said. That it, <laughs> and and then the fact is, each audit. Uh, I think we were talking over Twitter on this. I can't remember. Um, but each audit, I feel, um, you know, th there are sort of general issues and errors, but each site is different. So to say, um, yeah, yeah, you, you would always like prioritise it in this order. Yeah, but I think each site works differently. So yeah, you have to have some kind of common sense. And I guess, you know, some level of knowledge as well of what you should be looking at. Absolutely. I'm sure there's still people out there I'm going to go off on one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like SEO experience is is something that you can just look at something and go, yeah, this is going to be huge for you. Um, for beginners, I think it's really helpful if you can tie things back to specific pages, particularly if you know that they're going to be the big money driving pages for you. Like try and tie these fixes back to Search Console clicks, to GA sessions, to GA revenue. If you've done key, keyword mapping to pages as well, you can look at the search volume associated with that page that's got missing H1 and maybe prioritize that. So try and stitch as much data as possible together. I know it can be a challenge, but it really does help. Yeah, I totally agree. Just uh, on that, where I put in the slides, you know, make sure you have access to Google Analytics, Google Search Console. Um, to people watching this, they might go, well, that's really obvious, but I still come across different companies and, you know, people have different accesses or they don't have the correct access to share access for that with you. Oh, I would um, get me started on access disappearing when people leave. Like, how often does that happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, things like with Google Search Console, which used to be Google Webmaster Tools, for anyone who wasn't aware. Um, the, the way that you set up, I think it's properties, the way you set up properties in Google Search Console, you might have set one up years and years ago because your website was HTTP and then many years later you moved to HTTPS, but you've not done anything with your Google Search Console to update that um, and change it. So some of that data, yeah, if not a lot of it will be wrong. Yeah, awesome. And I guess a, an interesting question for me, particularly, and if people have answers in the comments as well, that would be really interesting, is at what point would you guys feel that you shouldn't audit? You, you've audited yourself and you've found some really big things. Now, are there things that you think people can tackle themselves or should get a specialist in or an agency in to help out with that? I mean, it... it... <sighs> It depends, and you know, for me, I think you know, hundred percent of this stuff can be outsourced. It comes down to how much time this is going to take you, or if you've got the right person in your team to do that. I've no problem at all in admitting that you know WordPress and design and, and all of that kind of stuff is a weak point of mine. Um, now, I'm not going to spend time fiddling about and spending ten hours to do something I could pay a guy to do in an hour. So, you know, I think with everything in life it's it comes down to it depends it, it, is it valuable for you to do it and waste you know 10 times more time than it would be for just to get a specialist and also uh you know if you've got guys out there who are just really good at something like Andy Drinkwater or something as an example for internal linking and I've got a big project and I've got you know five other really important things to do as well as the internal link and then I might just say Andy 
how much does this cost? Can you sort this out for me whilst I'm going away doing the other changes or building links or, you know, mapping out the content or whatever it's going to be? So it comes down to budget as well. If you've got the budget to do it, then, you know, I think you, you want to also consider trying to delegate stuff and get, you know, a bit more pace into the project. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> But no, that, you say it's the agency every time. Come on. No, it, 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 yeah, it, you know, it does come down to that thing where I'd, you know, I do all sorts of audits within this business. Um, and so doing like a Google Analytics audit, as an example, um, a lot of people don't know that they haven't set up their analytics properly, that it should be audited, uh, et cetera. So that point alone is interesting. Um, then you have to look at the fact that it's like, oh, okay, so I've learned that my analytics might not be set up properly, all these factors. And then is it worth, as like Craig was saying, the, the allocation of time, is it worth your time trying to become some form of an expert to be able to go, oh, I've learned the ins and outs of Google Analytics, how it should be tagged up on my site, fired off through Google Tag Manager, and now I've set up all the elements in there um, that it should be, or should I just go to someone uh, and pay them to do it because simply I don't have the time, I don't have the budget for myself to be learning this. Um, yeah. Yeah, all good points, all good points. And I, particularly if there are any beginners on, on the line, it's it's really good for you to know that you're never going to know 100% about SEO. There, there are so many elements and they're changing all the time. Don't feel overwhelmed if you don't know everything. Nobody does, not even Craig. Like nobody knows 100 yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Um, that's why I love things like these webinars and you know being on Twitter um, and getting involved in conversations because there are a lot of people who are more specific knowledge based uh, rather than sort of more generalist. And so you know it's great just to be able to absorb other people's knowledge uh, and information. They've spent tireless hours working out this one sector of SEO or, you know, digital marketing. Um, so yeah, just gaining as much knowledge as possible. Wonderful. So a question that's come in, what pointers should we consider in a UX audit? You said you do quite a lot of different audits. So that's an interesting one. Um, in terms of pointers for a UX audit, you know, that's probably the wrong way to look at it. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, you can obviously look at UX from a common sense point of view and try and implement, you know, the bare basics that's not there. But I think there's got to be um, data-led decision-making done, do tests, split testing. I don't like people that are just looking for a pointer because what works for Tristam's site might not work for yours, page, even though you're in the same industry. Um, so I think you've got to test stuff. And as I say, I've done a lot of changes on a lot of websites over the years and sometimes you think, like, I've got this template, which you kind of have, you know, a, a call to action and stuff like that, but it doesn't quite work like that. Sometimes, just for some weird-ass reason, another page converts a hell of a lot better, gets a lot more engagement. And sometimes, even common sense, you're looking at it going, why? How? But it is what it is. And obviously, when you're doing, uh, you know, UX stuff, click through and, uh, click through and engagement is quite a powerful thing for Google anyway. So if somehow people like a page that might be a lot more basic and that's getting all the click-through rate and engagement, of course, it's going to outperform the other page. So I think uh, testing is the only way you can do it. Do not go by Tristam's great pointers on UX. Do your own testing. Get your heat maps. You know, do, do whatever you have to do. And, and that's no offence to, to Tristam, but, you know, what does he know about your business and your website? You know, we need data, so there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Tristan. <laughs> yeah, what are your great pointers on UX? I'm intrigued. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but no, I, I, I agree with you, Craig. It's, it's yeah, it's using uh, a balance of sort of yeah, data, software, and in humans in that process. I realise we're quite sensitive for time, so I don't want to sort of open up another. Stream of my yeah. consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. 
Yeah, it's a good conversation to have. I think there's a lot of people on the comments enjoying our uh, our healthy debate on the topic. So crack on, Tristan. Tell us about your UX pointers. <laughs> no, I haven't got many more at the moment. Like, no, that's it, that's it. Yeah, I remember having a conversation with uh, our CRO expert, expert about um, if you followed all the rules of the best conversion rate optimization, you would have no con content on a page. It would just be a buy now button. Like, and that's it. You just want, if you do zero distractions and, and really noticeable things, it's that's it. You, mm. It's a button on the page. So everything in balance. Yeah, I would agree with that. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for joining us. I think that's just about it for time. I hope you've had a really great time. Please, if you haven't already, go and watch the first one of these videos. And the third one will be out soon. So look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Cheers.